for the February My Blog Guest Google Plus Hangout on Air. This session we talk about bylines, biographies, articles, blogging, and a little chit chat about moderation. So Michael, what have you been up to since we last chatted? Well, actually I'm working now on a WordPress uh, website for a jazz singer. So I was going to ask oh, you if you have any, any tips. Oh, wow. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. So, I mean, this person uh, has no social media presence at all. So I was wondering, how do you get a, a starting singer like this? She had one CD. How do you get her on Spotify and, uh, and all those places, allmusic.com, all those things? Um, it's kind of process. You know, if I had to pick one site as far as starting, I'd go on ReverbMation.com. Okay. Uh, she uses something called CD Baby. Did you help them hear about that? Yep, CD Baby is great for distribution, um, digital, as well as the CDs. Okay, and perfect. Reverb Nation works really well for connecting to all the different social media sites. And she can use that to p put embed code, widgets, and things on her website. Or it integrates with WordPress? Yes, works with okay. WordPress. In fact, if you want to chat a little bit later, I can fill you in all kinds of fun sure. music tips. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you say music, I get really excited. I'm sorry, I'll spare the rest of you guys. We'll get, <laughs> we'll get back to okay. blogging. <laughs> to share the music with us. Oh, there we go. That's what I should be doing. <laughs> yeah, just go on Spotify. You can hear it. <laughs> and how about you, Mar? Well, I've been busy trying to keep up with my blog, but I've been trying to study too, so I'm trying to balance my life at the moment. I think that's a lifelong thing, trying to balance. Yes. It's good when you do find it. Yes, yes. So what's your blog? Um, it's Emmy Cooks. You want to put that in the chat window? Sure. Excellent. Thank you. Hey, I think I found it. Oh, excellent. We hear Shannon. Well, I'm, I'll come back to you while Gerald's sitting down. Shannon, what's up? In your blogging world, uh, literally just crawled out of bed, so I'm halfway through my coffee and I'm not even conscious. So. Okay, well maybe by the end of the hangout, then we'll we'll <laughs> be conscious. And, and Gerald, yes, your turn. Uh, What's Weber, going on? <laughs> uh, Gerald Weber from Houston, Texas, uh, co-founder of Viral Content Buzz. Um, owner of Search Engine Marketing Group. And um, yeah, Viral Content Buzz is, uh, <clears throat> is great. For, for those of you that don't know, it's a uh, platform that basically helps you generate, it's a community platform that uh, helps you generate uh, buzz around your quality content on sites like Facebook, Twitter, um, what is it? Stumble upon in Pinterest now, and we're going to be adding Google Plus in, in, in the near future. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, we, you know, as you know, Deborah, we've been making a lot of updates. We recently added uh, Stumble Upon, which is, which is very cool. Um, very, very good platform. I've actually had a lot of content, my content in the past go viral on Stumble Upon, so it definitely has the potential to send your, uh, your uh, content viral. Uh, but uh, beyond that, I mean, the community is just uh, it's just growing uh, every day. Uh, new members, more activity. Uh, if you have if you have some good content and you uh, submit it there, um, you're you know you're definitely going to get some some additional social social action. Excellent, excellent. What's your feedback on the stumble upon edition? A lot of people really excited to see that. <clears throat> uh, once it's in that community. Then it has the potential to to grow legs of its own because uh, the, for those of you that don't know the way StumbleUpon works is basically a database of uh, websites. <clears throat> you can browse the websites based on uh, websites or content based on interest. Um, you like to see something you like, give it a th thumbs up. You don't like it, you give it a thumbs down. That's the that's the uh, and then it delivers more content based on your uh, your specific profile. That's the basics of the platform. 
so once you have some content on StumbleUpon, once it's submitted, if users start liking it, it can grow organically. And um, you know, uh, once once that happens, you know, content can basically get legs of its own. I've had some content uh, that that once it starts taking off on StumbleUpon, you know, it could get twenty thousand visits a day for like two three weeks. Yeah, explain that in a way that's uh, you know easy to understand. Yes, especially the part about growing legs. I like I like that part as far as illustration. <clears throat> yeah, once I mean once something gets going on StumbleUpon, yeah, it just kind of it just kind of takes on momentum of, of its own. You know, it's like kind of like a you know like a snowball. Once it gets to a certain point, it'll yeah. just keep going. That makes sense. So we're going to talk about author biographies during this session. And we're waiting, Phil, but there's some um, internet connection issues. So I don't want to steal his content. He sent over some suggestions as far as um, what he wanted to cover, but I thought we'd at least start chatting about them. Um, if any of you have examples of really good author bios or you want to share your own, I would love to hear them. I have some. Um, let me just scan through what I have. I do, I've been collecting some. You've been collecting the, the good bios or the bad bios? The good bios. The bad bios, okay. I don't know. I'd have to change a little bit or something, not to you know, point out any names or companies, you know? That's the challenge, is I certainly don't want to have a broadcast that we're going around picking on people. But, well, um, the thing is, is, is they, they, people lie or make up names anyway. It's the link that I want to make sure I don't include. Oh, gotcha. You just make up one. I guess the ones that I really have issue with is when people, because we talk about natural linking so much on my blogcast, uh, especially with the rules and whatnot. And and if anybody doesn't know, I am a moderator, and I put my eyeballs on the, on the articles every day. Um, but the ones that I really, really have a hard time with are uh, when it's when people say it's the company or the product plus city name or uh, country name, you know, the kind where it says lawyer, uh, Minnesota or something, you know, because it just does look natural. Uh, here's one here. Um, Nathan Smith is a dentist in Billings, uh, Minnesota. He has attained uh, BS in zoology with minors. Blah, blah, blah. This person has gone on, on a bit. But most people, when they make a, a, a byline, they're, they're trying to plunk in the keywords, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. usually the reason for it. Sure. Um, and it does not look like or read naturally. When you put it in the byline, it's not as bad as when you, you would throw it in the middle of the, of the article itself. Excellent. Gerald, thoughts on author bios? Yeah, you know, um, uh, like, like best practices or something like that. Yep, or example good ones, examples of not so good ones. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think... I think Shannon was kind of was kind of talking about it. Uh, you know, um, like, like it comes across as uh, it's kind of strange when you can see like the keywords are, uh, are are like forced into the bio and very unnatural. But you know, so I'm I'm not really I'm not really uh, completely sure what's the um, you know best way to address that. Um, you know, I know that uh, at my blog guests, you're only allowed one anchor text uh, link nowadays. But like, let's say someone is trying to rank for um, uh, a very obscure keyword, and uh, the uh, the the anchor text is kind of forced into the bio. Um, I personally find it as kind of a turn off. Um, I was I was actually going to ask. You know, Phil, how he deals with that as a moderator, but uh, Shannon is still here, huh? Yeah. So, how do you deal with that as a moderator when you see a byline where you have like the keywords are obviously like jammed into the byline and it reads very unnatural? Uh, you know, they're just going for the anchor text. Um, like, how do how do you how do you handle that as a moderator? Do you let that sort of thing go through? Uh, is it disallowed or what? It isn't really disallowed if it's in the byline, unless the byline is blatantly about the company. I mean, unless it's blatantly what? It's blatantly about the company. Like the byline 
is not supposed to be here. I'll read it, my little. If it reads like a company bio. Yeah, it's it's supposed to be about the author, and if even if the author is the person who is working for the company, or it, it really needs to be personal to the, about the author. You know, like I like golfing, and, and these are my hobbies, and in my spare time, I I I'm looking for sites about plumbing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but uh, it's supposed to be something that should, here is that, the byline should not be an extension of the article, but about the author. It should be personal, not promotional. Let me give you an example. Let's say, <coughs> let's say there's an article about medical, let's say. It could be, a, a, it could be about, you know, medical, uh, something to do with medical related and then the byline reads something like uh, you know Susan Smith is a blogger who writes about cheap scrubs and then cheap scrubs is the anchor text and it's going to like a sales page with like uh, medical scrubs you know like uh, on it uh, you, you know what I'm saying is that yeah. it's kind of like I don't know, kind of blatant. Uh, they're going for the ink text, and and they're going for clean, and that that much is clear. So that's not too bad. I mean, I've seen so much worse. Um, the the thing that that uh, when you were first saying about that made me think of was relevance. You know, where the article is about sheep scrubs, and the link is going to gambling. You know what I mean? Um, those are really, really bad. Those get usually get hit. Yeah, those do get disallowed. Yeah, they, correct. they get, they get, they get, uh, you know, sent back to the author and saying, you know, or it's hidden. Not. Uh, yeah, it's, that's just the word. Basically, when we say it's hidden, it's it's uh, no longer live in mm. in the gallery. It's no, it's yeah, no it's longer. No one else can see it. Yeah, it's in moderation. Um, but yeah, that that tends to happen quite a bit. Um, what about – what's up? No, go ahead. No, I was just going to say <clears> – <throat> and I, I actually um, uh, I actually have an answer to this for, for blog owners, but what about um, – uh, what about – and we talked about this before, but I uh, just wanted to get a different perspective. What about uh, multiple, multiple social profile links in the byline? So let's say one link to the homepage and a link to Twitter and Google+. Uh, do you think that's over the top linking? Yes. I know people generally say two is kind of the unspoken rule. So what do you think about that? Two would probably be good. Like usually, I mean, if you get the one link, right, you get the one keyword link. And that's sort of a, a distinction because you could put the, the brand name. If it's a brand name, you can put the brand name in the link. Or in the, I'm sorry, in the bio. That's okay. Or you can put the domain name, you know, uh, uh, www.domain.com. You know, that's that's okay. Um, but to me, it's sort of redundant because, anyway, that's another subject. So that's okay. But um, if the profile link, or I'm sorry, the social profile link that you leave is your own, that's okay. If it's to the company, then that's sort of considered another self-serving link. You know what I mean? So you put your keyword link. If it's all going to be in the bio, bio, the keyword link and the profile link is okay, but the profile link should be your personal profile. Link. So Twitter, your Twitter account, Google Plus is what's most recommended because in Google Plus, on that, in your Google Plus account, as most people know, or if you don't, you can you can list the sites that you. Uh, you are an author on, or you can, and you can list your own personal sites as well as your business sites. So all of your social profiles are on your Google Plus account. So mm -hmm. you put your Google Plus account in, then it all goes back to, you know, these are all the sites that I'm an author on, or these are the sites that, you know, uh, I I own, etc. This is my business. I think that's the challenge, though. As far as I used to just put my website and Twitter. But now I really want to put the Google in there as far as the authorship. And that's the hard channel because now you're hitting three links. Well, I think it's probably okay uh, as long as, well, two sort of, I don't know, three to me is a little excessive. If you're all going to throw it in the byline, that's a little much. 
Gerald had mentioned it. Yeah, I just I just became aware of that myself. A lot of blogs have that built in to it, but that's a pretty cool plugin if uh, that supports uh, the authorship uh, markup, but also allows you to add some social profiles and stuff uh, in it that that will show up under the author box, which is pretty cool. So you don't really need a, a plugin for it, but you do need to know that you need to add the. Um, I can't remember the the, the rel equal author. I can't remember the technical word for what you call that. <laughs> it escapes me at the moment. That's fine. You know, the other um, challenge is if people are adding guest posts but not adding user profiles within WordPress. Yeah. And that's where maybe um, that plugin that Gerald suggested would be really helpful. Do you There's think it would work for that? Yeah, but I imagine I'm not the only person that that comes, you know, that that happens to. You know, you see a new plugin and you think, oh, well, that would be helpful. And yeah, I used to be a plugin junkie, and I went yeah. through and and basically cleaned out all non-essential plugins. Um, it so, does yeah, I mean, it's down. got a valid point. A lot of blogs have the capability um, uh, already built into the theme and then um, you know um, there are some there are there is some functionality that plugin offers that that isn't that uh, isn't standard with a lot of them but yeah I mean what she's saying is very valid though you really need to evaluate uh, every time you put in a plugin because over time if you get a lot it, uh, a lot of plugins accumulate it will slow down your WordPress blog not only were will 50 plugins slow your site down but it, they, a, a conflict can really wreak havoc with your site as well. Like you said, it depends on what the plugin is. I mean, if it's a plugin that's just adding the code for the tag for Google Authorship, yeah. it's not doing a whole lot on the site, so it's not going to pull it down as far as bandwidth and less likely to conflict. Those jQuery plugins, they don't yeah. tend to get along really well. <laughs> uh, Mike, you actually create um, WordPress profiles, is that correct? I was just looking at the page that you sent over for the well, bios. Well, basically, um, we use what Shannon mentioned, the user profile, and we have a couple of plugins. We, we, used, we used to have a plugin that allow HTML in, in the user profile, but now with the latest uh, WordPress, I believe you can do this, so you don't need that plugin. But we have other plugins that uh, allow us to automatically generate this page that you look at it, meet our bloggers, which is basically one page where show all 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 the team of bloggers in one place. Um, everything on this page is generated automatically by plugin. It's altered alphabetically. Uh, it has the images and, and the title. Um, so uh, w when a new guest blogger uh, talk to us about coming on board, we refer them to this page and we say, well, if you gonna submit us a bio. Make sure it's a business quality bio. Here is a sample. Look at this page. So and that's, that's I like that page because then I can go see who all writes for your website all in one page. That's really that's handy. Right. And, and basically, just by looking at this page, you can see you can get an idea based on the bios who was the one shot deal that wrote one article and we didn't hear from them anymore, and who was the, <laughs> who are the regular contributors. Very good point. Um, hey, Gerald, my SEO expert. So um, what about bylines and duplicity on the internet and copyscape? Is it true that each byline should be different for each article? Well, you know, that's, that's a subject to debate, really. Um, uh, I mean, the whole duplicate content thing, Personally, myself, I think if you, I personally feel if you're taking a quality approach to guest blogging, it doesn't matter so much, um, you know, because Google recognizes that you know authors, you know, uh, are going to be the same same person. Um, my personal opinion, I don't think it's a big deal. Some people uh, go overboard and they want to rewrite every single byline, but you know, the way I feel about it, if you're if you are the the same author, and you know you're you're basically, um, you know, like I'm, for example, I'm president of the Search Engine Marketing Group, co-founder of Viral Content Buzz. There's only so many ways I can say that in a byline. And, <laughs> so, you know, so after a while, it's like, okay, so like, how creative do I have to get? 
uh, when I'm going to be the president, then I'm going to be the CEO, then I'm going to be the head honcho, you know, or the head cheese or whatever. There's only so many different ways I can rewrite that, and it's going to all be similar anyway. So I personally don't think it's a problem as long as you're taking a high-quality approach. Um, but others feel differently. I, I know some people obsess about it. And I, 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 I personally feel that, that you're just, you know, it's, it's not that important to rewrite it every single time, provided you're taking a quality approach to your guest blogging. Um, I would, I would vary, uh, definitely vary the anchor text and the destination URL. I wouldn't use the exact same anchor text and destination URL every time. And um, while we're on the topic, um, also, uh, and this kind of goes more into the SEO side of it. Um, if you're using anchor text, um, definitely don't use the exact match anchor text and don't use it every time. So if you're trying to uh, rank for, um, uh, I don't know, uh, SEO Houston, let's say, um, and you, you do SEO Houston every single time, well, uh, using the same anchor text over and over will eventually uh, uh, cause you some problems. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to, if you're using anchor text, you want to use a long tail variation of the keyword, and it doesn't even have to be your, uh, it doesn't even have to be a, an actual long tail keyword that you're that you are targeting. So for example, let's say uh, let's say I'm trying to rank for, I'm going to use Houston Web Design as an example. I could do uh, Houston web design firm, Houston web design company. Uh, so I'm creating a long tail, and also you can sandwich the uh, sandwich the anchor text. So you could do, for example, uh, a leading Houston web design firm. You know, so you've got your anchor text in there, but you have keywords before or after it. Uh, so you want to vary that um, a lot. You you do not want to use the exact same anchor text over and over. That's the biggest tip I could give you about, uh, you know, uh, the bylines when it comes to SEO and um, what to, to do or not do. Is that because Google's going to slap you, or is it just best practices? Yeah, be it, it is because of Google. It's because uh, <coughs> it's because um, uh, it's part of their over optimization. Um, and some call it a penalty, some call it an update. But what will happen is um, once you get a, a certain, and this goes, this goes for keywords on the page, but it also goes for anchor text and links. Once you get to a certain percentage of, of the same anchor text, Google see, says, okay, this is not natural. What is natural? If you link to a URL or if you link using a long string of words, if you link using something like click here, but if you use the exact same keyword phrase over and over and over, after a while, Google takes a look at it and says, you know what, that's not natural. So you know what, we're going to go ahead and take this phrase that is being linked to in an unnatural manner, and we're going to go ahead and discount that a little bit. So uh, that'll actually work. It'll have the opposite of the desired effect. And that's, so that's, you why, that's why you want it. But if you... If you use your keywords, but you mix it with the long tail variations, keywords before, keywords after, keywords before and after, you still got your keywords in there, but it's not the exact, uh, the exact uh, uh, anchor text, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna uh, uh, put up that red flag. So, like I would say, um, it, once you once you start getting a certain percentage, and the exact percentage is, is there's uh, is not. Known, but I'd say like once you start getting like you know uh, 20, 30 percent of the exact same anchor text, you're starting to kind of get into a z danger zone. So, so, that so now um, for clarification for people preparing their bios, when you say, for example, Houston Web Design, that's not the whole link there. It's when you change it up to add a word at the end or at the beginning, and you want the link to actually cover all. So, leading Houston Web Design, you want the whole <coughs> right. thing so if, to be so hyperlinked. If, if let's say you're targeting the key phrase Houston Web Design, okay. If you only link using the anchor text Houston Web Design over and over and over, then then that sends up the red flag that says the Google says, hey, this isn't natural because people aren't going to just link 
this, these keywords, unless the name of your company is Houston Web Design, then and 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 that's your domain, then then if you link to that over and over and over, it's going to eventually put up a red flag, and Google's going to discount that phrase. But if you use that in conjunction with other keywords, like you create a long tail version, Houston Web Design Firm, Houston Web Design Company, Houston Web Design Agency, or you put words before it and after it, that doesn't count towards that percentage because you are variating that keyword phrase. And then sometimes you'll want to also uh, you want to also with you want to also not link using the anchor text. You might want to say. Um, uh, you know, uh, Houston Web Design Firm, and then put the actual URL. So um, that looks natural too. So Google's looking for stuff like that now. That uh, you know, um, it, they're looking at the link profile as a whole. So they're going to say, okay, these are all the people that are linking to your site, and you got, uh, you know, um, if, if they see, all right. Um, over 30% of this uh, links are Houston Web Design. And that's a keyword phrase that obviously someone's targeting. This looks unnatural. We're going to discount that. But if they see, okay, um, it's a Houston Web Design firm. It's a Houston. Web, it's a leading Houston Web Design agency. This looks more natural because the anchor text is varied, and then they occasionally see branded link coming in uh, from the URL. You know, may, maybe occasionally click here. So um, you want to mix up the anchor text enough, and you want to avoid. I, in fact, I would say I would probably almost never link using the exact, the exact match uh, anchor text that you're actually targeting. It used to be that used to be the key. It used to be what you wanted to do every time, but um, now you. I would I would almost never link using the exact. I would always use some variation of the actual phrase. Now we actually cover this in a few Twitter chats and we'll put some links in the um, summary post as far as this hangout and the takeaways. But I want to ask our panel how you would handle as far as the personal versus the business. Do you want to hear that the person has um, X number of kids, that they like to fish, what state they like to visit, all of that information or two sentences? What would be the best recommendation of combining or would you leave the personal part out? Michael, you have a comment? Uh, well, since we are a, a business side, then the answer is no, and that's it. No, <laughs> no. I don't care uh, if you are married, divorced, how many kids. We we care about your business aspect, not your personal stuff. That that's one I'm a, <laughs> I'm accustomed <laughs> to. But you can Mar still, you can still make a, a a byline that's personal to you, but still business related. Am I right? I've done that on my examiner articles where I say I love people and that's about as personal as it gets and then it goes into <laughs> <laughs> But you see what I'm saying with a little yes. bit of thought you can certainly do that you could definitely make it personal but still your business like personable but with yeah. a, a business approach like Min says she prefers a byline that's relevant to the article and you know when I was listening to you earlier Shannon uh, I guess I take that for granted. I have about eight different blogs, so it makes it really easy that when I write an article, I just include the bio that relates to the blog that's relevant to that article. article. But it's challenging if you don't have, well, I don't recommend eight different blogs, but <laughs> it's challenging no, without it's that true. diversity. I can't do it either. <laughs> Mar, any final thoughts or questions? Yes, I do agree that the byline should be short and not long because you're already writing the article. So the byline should be preferably short. I think that seems to be a common, except with the, I like how Michael handles it with a separate page with a longer biography. Yeah, normally if you're doing something apart then, and you want to give a longer one, I guess it's acceptable. I don't know, based on what um, Michael or... Well, th those also appear in the articles, basically that page is automatically pulling data from several sources. It pulls the text from the uh, user profile, the picture from the Gravatar, and the link for the category of articles for that auto. So it basically combines all automatically and pulls it in one page. But those bios will appear on the articles also. Okay. 
I like it. I'd love to see those kind of pages more and more um, to be able to actually read about all the different authors and, and get kind of that overview. That's great. Yeah, looks good. The way how they have it on the website. That well, too, yes, I mean, you if, you're, sure. if you're talking about something and you don't know the background of the person, why should I believe you? You don't know the person, right? Yeah. Goes to credibility. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Good point. Right. Welcome, Hi. Phil. Hi, Deborah. How are you? Good. I told you I've been looking forward to this. I'm sitting here ready for the Phil wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call it that. <laughs> we were talking Shannon, about Shannon bios. Gave you all, hmm? Shannon gave you all the gen earlier. <laughs> Did you watch that? No, I, we had a few emails to and fro afterwards. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's true. She brought up some good points. And what would you say are the needed, wanted, and unwanted components of a byline? Needed is a G plus profile link that very few people use, even though uh, Google has let it be known that this is going to be increasingly important for any post to have credibility the author has got to be able to lay claim to it if you if you won't put your name to it then basically it's not worth much uh, you know with the, the Google Plus link is like signing it uh, claiming it as your own you wouldn't claim anything as your own if it was total crap. So that is something which 90% of my blog guest um, writers do not do. So that's one. Sometimes people will um, write it but not link it. So usually they just miss it off altogether. Or they put a Twitter link, which is, uh, in my opinion, of limited use. They would be much better off putting a Google Plus link. They then need, <coughs> excuse me, um, to make it personal. Now, this doesn't. No one policy is going to suit everyone. It has to be personal about and by the writer. Uh, so for example, well you've seen one of the, uh, someone sent you one of the my bylines that I've written didn't they? I actually have one uh, and it works, it's great. Uh, so I can write convincingly about flip phones, uh, you know, so it would be something like Phil Turner thinks flip phones are the best form, format of phone for him because he's a clumsy sort of uh, it's handy, it fits in a pocket. Uh, so that, I'm, I'm talking off the cuff here, aren't I? Um, <laughs> That's good. You know, just link it into the, the, the bio and the article need to be linked uh, at least slightly. Very often people will write something about cars and then the bio will be about car insurance but they've not actually mentioned car insurance anywhere in the article is that okay so with that, you? so that well we wouldn't be too happy it's less than perfect yep uh, we'd know, it depends on the quality of the article whether we'd let it go but generally you, you would pass it um, it would depend on the quality of the article. Uh, it would be another nail in the coffin of a poor article, or if it was a good one, I would let it pass. If it was in between, I'd, I'd leave a comment. I try and leave comments where I can, because hiding articles just makes work for us and upsets I've, people. I've started doing that too. More comments, less hiding. That's good. <laughs> uh, I'm a newbie, so. <laughs> I, oh, I know. We're all newbies once. I've, only, I've been at it now for a year, a year and a half. I mean, 
if I'm in the gallery, I can find things for my own bow as well and kill two birds with one stone. I don't think people realize just how much work goes into not only the writing, but the editing. I mean, I can spend 15 Especially minutes, 30 minutes of editing, and you might have someone that says they have perfect English, and most of the world, maybe, you know, 78% of the world thinks they have perfect English. But maybe I'm just anal when I do editing, but I expect proper English grammar, so I'm really picky in the editing. Well, I am, because that's what Anne wants us to do. Uh, Anne wrote something recently on the forum which struck a chord with me, but basically that um, we've got SEOs who are obsessed with the idea of passing on link juice and they only want their link in the article, they don't want anything else there because that will dilute the value of the bad. link. The articles I'm writing for one of the members uh, he's got about four different accounts. His name's Sam Jones. I never, I never edit. I never check his articles. You know, see you'll see, you'll see a lot of them unchecked because I never go near them because that would be immoral. Checking what I've written myself, you know. So anyway, I leave that to <laughs> other people. I don't suggest them or anything either because again, that would be unfair. Uh, Conflict of interest. But he, yeah. So uh, I, I try and keep my two jobs separate, my morning job writing for him and the afternoon job doing the editing. Uh, but he's, un he's under instructions just to have the one article, the one link, plus uh, I've got my Google Plus link in there as well because he's worked out that that's a benefit to, to him to get that in there. But when I see articles being refused, I've mentioned before that the moderators are, um, get a copy of every article that's, that's refused. And a lot of them say, too many links. And all the links are actually authority links. I mean, if there's something like 10 or 20 links in there, most of them will be authority links. I mean, personally, I would think that would be, be great, but a lot of bloggers or people that are accepting these kind of articles are not understanding that the more uh, source sites that you can, you know, quote, then the more uh, authoritative the article is. I mean, how many newspaper articles do you read that don't have multiple supporting links in it or information? You know, as seen on CNN or, you know, the source. If they said it, therefore it's true, right? So I think the more supporting or source links that you provide, give examples. So-and-so said this, or this. I mean, that's great. It shows that you've actually put effort. Well, it probably varies from publisher to publisher, you know, especially what they're looking for. What the And you brought a good point as far as a news article. Like I write for the Examiner. That one, I put in a lot of links to the different sources that have maybe a different perspective on the same news story so that people can read my articles and get kind of a full-fledged directory of different places to go to read more as a yeah. part of my own take. And exactly for that reason, because like I was reading about uh, something that happened in the old neighborhood that uh, my husband and I lived in before here. And, uh, you know, you do a search on online and it usually gives you a link of the different newspapers that are covering the story. And everybody, each each newspaper has a different uh, way that they present that information. So if you go and look at these other links, you might get more information that the other person didn't include or etc. So, I mean, to me, that can only help uh, the article, you know, it, 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 rather than having to say, okay, well, now I got to go search all these terms, you know, here's, here's more information. It's right there for you. That's a good point. So do we have any examples of good bylines and not so good bylines? Okay, Min Min found these, and are these good ones or bad ones? I haven't read it yet. Bad. Okay. All right, let's see. We've got an alternative to Vine is, of course, YouTube. It's unlikely that Vine will ever beat the volume of viewers that you can gain via YouTube, but it should still serve its purpose. Check out this video to see how a popular coupon code company is using videos to engage their customers. Yeah, what was the link that they used in the byline? Was it uh, 
I guess these, it would be a, see how a popular coupon code company is using videos, so it's probably in there somewhere, the hyperlink that they used for the byline. Well, well <laughs> that's a good point, Min Min says, the problem is there's no author in the byline. Very true. Also, I'm confused because I'm thinking, are we talking about Vine, YouTube, or the coupon company? Yeah, that's why I asked which was the link. But that's a good point, because then that byline as appears to seem as though it's a continuation of the article. It's not a byline at all. It's not like, you know, Kim is a, I don't know, cat. Kim loves cats and blah, 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 you know, or something like that. Um, it looks like it's just a, a little add-on to the article itself. So or a little. Why, yeah. Or an advertisement on, yeah, how this. Exactly. Yeah, I'd rather see, as a publisher, I'd rather see a personal element on the, like you said, as far as, even if it's not the real name, a person, so that I feel like I'm oh. connecting to the author. I think very few people actually use their real name, unless they're uh, linking their, their profile or social profile in some way. The odds are pretty good they may they make up the name. Ah, good point. Phil says so some people seem to see the bio as their selling opportunity. I think of the bio as if somebody wants more information, then you're inviting them to come go through the door and, and find your selling opportunity. But it, in my opinion, as an author, it's still about the blog. It's just a little little blurb about who wrote it so they feel connected, but it's about the blog where the, the article is posted. Or it's a way to show that whoever was the original blogger on that specific site didn't write it. Right. Really, to me, that's how it, because it is called guest posting. That's the whole purpose. Exactly. And that could be twofold. That could help if the publisher doesn't agree 100%. It's a way to say, hey, these are different perspectives. I'm not the same person. There's two different people. Yeah, the views of this article are not the, the owner of the, the blog's views. That's, you know, you see, see that stuff quite often. But you know, the nice thing too, the differentiation between the blog owner and the, the guest writer is the credibility. You may have a, a guest writer that yeah. that's all they do, and you've got that credibility aspect which they can show in their byline. Well, I think it's to the advantage of the author to claim authority or to claim the, the, the article in some way. You know, I mean, it's only benefiting you. I don't, I don't see, I, I don't know, like, I, I understand there's a lot of SEOs there that use this this kind of uh, tactic as something in their toolbox, and, and I get that. But, um, you know, if, if you're going to write articles and you are a writer, why not get something out of it? Maybe you're getting paid in some way, not through my blog guest, because, you know, everything's, uh, nothing, we don't sell anything there. But um, maybe the author or the writer is, is getting paid in some way. In some cases, that would be, be, be the case. But if it were me and I was building a, a reputation as a good author, I would claim it. You know, this is me. These are the sites I could contribute to. See this post, what I wrote here. And, you know, over time, heaven forbid, you could start asking for, for more money to write the stuff, right? <laughs> you not get paid that lousy three cents anymore. <laughs> now, can anyone explain to me why someone would not want a byline? I've seen a few my blog guests post, especially through the social help forum, where there's no byline. And I've gone back to the the blog owner and, and asked, and yes, this is a guest post. Why would somebody put in a guest post without a byline? Because they're an SEO uh, and they just want the link in the, bi in, the, in the body text. They got their link in the body text. They don't need anything else. So they just don't bother doing it. That could be a reason. I think my blog guest does not um, favor that approach. Oh, we don't. Do we? Definitely. We want <laughs> to have a byline. You've never seen one. So Min says she doesn't see any that don't include bylines. They're not real often, but there's a no, few of them. Then, yeah. So Phil says yes. Okay. So if you don't have a byline, Phil will lower the axe. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, did you hear Shannon? <laughs> Well, no. he's the editor in chief. Come on. No. <laughs> so that means if you don't include the byline, that's it. Phil's gonna get you. So there you go. Hey, that reminds me. I know this is going another direction, but I think it would be really helpful. Be helpful for me and also helpful for other people watching. Uh, what are the roles? All three of you are moderators. We know that Phil is editor in chief. Shannon, do you go through the articles as well? I do. The article. Yeah. Okay. 
I try to to uh, keep up with as much as possible. I'm not. I don't want to go on about all oh, my illness and all that, but I am not a well person, so I do as much as I can. But um, Min, Min is like she does so much. She, she's in there all the time, all day long, sending emails back and forth. She's she's really busy. Um, but so she uh, uh, looks at the hidden posts and she she uh, goes through the the gallery, the article gallery. And there's different things that we do too. We test out new features sometimes. A lot of the time, right now we just we're testing something which you know we can't really we can't really say what. But um, yeah, that's a good point too. Min says some of us prefer doing specific things. Uh, so they do those tasks rather than um, just going through the articles. I, I tend to just go through the article gallery and, and try to approve stuff and, and leave helpful notes. And that's something we should really say too, that we don't make up these rules just for the heck of it. We really want to help those articles do the best that they can. So it's not like we're saying, oh, we don't like you, we don't like the way you write, or it's not nothing personal at all. We just want to help you. I write articles, edit articles, check articles under review, talk to members, suggest great articles from great authors, pin articles, remove pins after a few days. You have a busy job too, Phil. Oh, I think he's probably the busiest guy for sure. Min likes to uh, dream up things that would help uh, the moderators a lot too. <laughs> so she's always got uh, great, great ideas about uh, features that would help us uh, help the user base, I guess. But mostly us, because you know, there's a lot of stuff we we need to get through. And um, I mean, even on a given night, I tend to work more at night. And so these guys have kind of finished their day, and except for Phil, because he's five or six hours ahead of me. And um, so I get the gallery stuff at night, and it's not very often that we get through all of this, all of the submitted articles for that single day. Even so, there's always stuff to do. That's true. It really takes a team. It does. We, the moderators have a, a group email and uh, a lot of the support for the, the users go to the same thing. So we all see what everybody else is doing and I think that's really useful because um, we can sort of keep on top of what's going on or help exactly. them <laughs> when somebody else isn't there to help them immediately. I mean that's my biggest peeve is is somebody asking a question in the forum or uh, you know lo somebody looking for support. You say, well, I'd like to at least acknowledge that you, it's been seen and that someone will get back to you, you know, rather than leaving you hang and going, well, it's been a day now and nobody wants to help me, you know. Well, that's part of building that community and helping people to know that they're valued. Yeah, I'd like to post in the general forum the one that uh, the the premium members. Um, like there's a forum that have that for the premium members, but I like to help a lot, a lot in the general forum too, or just you know start a conversation um, because they, you know, just to try to keep things going, keep people involved and interactive. Definitely. Thank you for joining us and viewing the My Blog Guest Hangouts for February. Come join us in the My Blog Guest community on Google Plus and also our Facebook page and our forums at myblogguest.com. And Thursday, Twitter chat with the hashtag myblogguest. See you there.